Okay, y'all. I'm going to un. I'm going to mute, and then I'm going to unmute. Or mom, you can unmute. Now I'll do it for you. There you go. Okay. Okay, everybody. Welcome to our leadership Zoom. I'm so excited. Um, I am excited to answer your questions tonight, to hang out with mom and just pour into you guys and to each other. And I feel like this is just so important. Um, you know that I have a newborn, so at some point he will likely wake up and likely need to eat. So we will navigate that together, okay? Um, so we are going to get started. You have We have seven questions from y'all. They're really good questions. Mom and I actually have the chance to have dinner together. Some of them merge, so we really realize where this leadership needs to focus, and it really helps me know how to pour in you guys even better. So I'm super excited about that. So um, you guys, welcome Mom on with us tonight. Pam Souter, our CNO. This is a huge treat. How you doing, Mama? I am so good. I was just, you know, watching some Blake Shelton. <laughs> yeah, just singing. I, I thought, well, shoot, I should have had a song for y'all tonight. I could have made up a country song. Well, we needed Dr. Don and his guitar and the and harmonica. Well, we do. I mean, seriously. It's just uh, our our song at conference really was a hit, you know, so we could have done something. Matching bonus or matching bonus song. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys weren't at our team party, you missed Dr. Don and mom's performance of the matching bonus song, which mm -hmm. for those of you that are getting your bonus match, uh, you know, on your check, you're, you're realizing the power behind this bonus matching. Cause it is just fantastic right now. So, uh, thanks for that mom. We probably should, uh, maybe make a corporate video of that or something. We, we, we've got to bring that back full on. <laughs> full on. Big announcement tonight too. So let's get this party started so I can be we ready get for my on. other uh, Zoom at 10. For sure. We are so excited for the announcement tonight. So, all right, without further ado, team, let's do this. Okay, first question. Um, first of all, congrats, Rockstar, because it says I have signed 13 newbies this month. Okay, it's oh, April 15th. Wow. That is fantastic. I have signed 13 newbies this month, and it's super overwhelming. What can I do to fix this? Okay, so one thing that we want to do, uh, uh, Kay and I are going to talk a little bit about talk too, self talk. Um, all right, we got to we got to get rid of the word overwhelming because then it's just going to get bigger. And so what we want to realize is congratulations for one thing. I mean, 13 people is tremendous and you deserve that. And so what we, what I typically do when I, you know, uh, talk to people, I just had the same question asked uh, Jerry and Chad Canellers group this past week. And uh, the biggest thing that I would do, is throw all 13 together in a Zoom like this. And because I love Zoom because we can do this. You can put them all together and first of all, see who shows up. You know, see who actually gets on the Zoom. That, that'll tell you a lot about the interest. You may not get all 13. Then everything that I would do with the, this particular group, I would do collectively as a group. And I would be sending them, uh, giving them tasks to do uh, all along the way. Like whatever you, uh, Kay, I think has a sheet that she's going to talk to you about in just a little bit. But I would send them as a group to go do specific things like go in your e-suite and watch this or go in e-suite and do this or post this and then do this and then come back the following week after all the tasks have been given and see who actually did it. And you can actually have them coming back to you on a daily basis, really uh, telling you when they checked it off. That tells me who to play with, you know, out of the 13, if two or three will be here by the end of that first 30, 60 days, you're going to have some good players there. So I would group them together so that you're only spending uh, 30 minutes perhaps with them each week 
together collectively, give them the task to do, see who comes back and does those tasks, and then you'll know exactly who to be working with. So that's how I would do it. Because what you want to do is you want 13 every week coming in your organization, you know, 13 um, to 15. Uh, if you're if you're doing that now, you, you're gaining some momentum here and you want to keep doing that. So it, you shouldn't have overwhelmment. I know that we all want to be fantastic leaders and we want our teams to flourish, but that shouldn't be overwhelming. That it should actually be very, very exciting and very inspiring. So group them all together. Just get, get them together. Uh, I would have this uh, Zoom same time every single week with them. Let, let it be known. Uh, you can put it out there. What's the best time for the vast majority of you? The rest could watch it later if they're working. Um, but also you run this team. This is your team. Uh, they're looking to you for advice. And it's up to you to set the parameters of when you want to talk to them, how you want to talk to them, and how you want to schedule that throughout your day and throughout your week. Don't let this team over overwhelm you or overpower you. You set the rules on all of this and you're going to be a very, very happy person. You're going to have a great team. Yeah, um, for sure. You know, when, when I asked for, um, top enrollers to give tips on what was working for them for last month, you know, host to post and power hours came up as the, the leading, you know, the leading tip as far as, you know, in addition to that, what's the work before that, that's messaging a, 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 a tremendous number of people. And, um, you know, I saw on the, our leadership, uh, triple diamond and above page for the, the whole company. And there was a tip, uh, you know, um, Leah Warren, who I had the opportunity to be on stage with at conference a couple of years ago, she, her and I bonded there. And she said that she, her husband gave her a shout out and said that, you know, in 24 hours, she had enrolled, I think it was 12 people. And so of course I messaged her and she said, Kay, I am messaging people like I've never messaged them before. It's like it just a fire came through me. And so when we're, when we're, sometimes we think, or sometimes we don't realize the, the power behind getting our newbies to go to work right away. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like we don't want to overwhelm them, but getting them to actually take action from the start is the best thing we can do. And it's a gamble, you guys. I mean, you enroll 13 people, you enroll five, I don't care the number, and it's still a gamble. Some will, some won't. So you've got to throw things out there and see if they're going to play with you a little bit because you don't want to be trying to hold them on when they're not giving you anything. So you give them tasks and that's what I do. I have them go through that. The first page of the training Academy, just through a few simple steps. And I've shared this on our leaders page and it simply says, let's get started with some important basics. First, log into your e-suite. I wouldn't know. I can't tell you guys how many people I see that are still on commission hold. When I go to their, their tree view or the organization explore and check on their account, I'm going, well, they haven't even logged in. You know, why are we even talking about them? You know, we've got to do this thing first. Then they've got to come to us and say, what's next? So get them to log in, take themselves off commission hold by filling out that tax form. At the top, I have them tap Training Academy, click on Newbie, and then they go through and download the new distributor checklist because I want them downloading the app. I want them serious. I want them setting up their auto shipment. I tell them to set it up for two boxes of wraps unless they want to come to me and have me explain it more. And I'm telling y'all, since I, since I just sat down and make, made this a list, a checklist, my newbies are coming in and they're going, okay, I've done this. Can you explain to me what the auto ship is? I just want to make sure I've got this set up right. And I'm realizing, yeah, they're, they're playing ball with me. Like they're hungry for this. And the ones that aren't, I'm not even talking about. So it doesn't even matter why talk about something that's not working. Um, I have them print off their steps to success, their Ruby chart and make their hundreds list. And I flat out say, don't worry if you don't have a hundred names, seriously, let's start with four customers and three people you want to partner with. Cause I just want them to give me names. So then we can start messaging 
And then I simply have a script I send them to say, okay, in, in the meantime, I want you to go ahead and post on your social media something you have ex that you have exciting news, something in your verbiage and something in your way. And um, have them post that, say, hey, I'm gonna announce a big announcement, I'm gonna post later tonight to get people kind of like, you know, what's going on, what's gonna happen. And then um, while that sits, it says text your 10 best people, the 10 people you want to tell exciting news first, contact them, however you usually do. So I have this a script on our team page. And then um, they're going through and asking for the, their product testers or cu loyal customers. So they're going in and using this to get their customers. And I'm telling y'all, when I just started, got focused on this and started sending this to my newbies or coming back on, well, I signed my first loyal. And I'm not feeling like, I'm doing the work for them. They're actually coming to me doing the work themselves. So there's that, that you have to actually take the time to send these messages out, give that newbie that one-on-one -on -one attention. And for those of you that are more mat, maybe mass enrollers that have these 13 people coming in or how many ever you have, I do agree with mom, get them on a Zoom. And even better, get them on a working Zoom. Working Zoom, so, yeah. I want to clarify that. Show them what to do. That is a power hour. That could be a host-to-post -post power hour because you get on the Zoom, then what? You, you should have already trained them with that message. Send, start sending this message out. Welcome to the team. Welcome to the team. Get them coming to you. Now, working Zooms, this is where they're, you're going to coach them through messaging. You can help them through the follow-up. You can help them break through those barriers where they're starting to alle alleviate some of those fears. So the more that you do this right out the gate, the more fire you're going to have. Um, welcome. And, you know, Kay, I want to add this because um, – at the beginning of the year, we had a call and we said, you know, if the Zoom is not a working Zoom, why do it? Mm -hmm. You know, so that it, you could have that first initial Zoom, the first 15 minutes of it could be, let's get acquainted and everybody introduce themselves so that they feel part of a team. And then the, the, the 45 remaining minutes of if you want to schedule an hour could be that 45 minute power hour. And you're getting them doing the the action steps so that you get paid. I mean, there's thirteen hundred dollars on the line there, and if you're diamond or above, you've got anywhere from eighty to an extra hundred and fifty a person. So we're looking at a potential couple thousand dollars here that you could acquire very quickly. I mean, we pay that fast start out uh, weekly, so you want to get them commission qualified. And you want them to get their own people, their own customers. Well, yeah, the more you have that, the more flexibility you have too. If you're, you know, a strong loyal customer enroller, then you have more flexibility in where you can actually put those customers. Mm -hmm. if they're getting their own. You've got more flexibility there. I love the chat that's happening. You're talking about doing group, um, group messaging. I love that too. Once you know kind of who your players are, put them all in a group together. They can be inspiring each other. Again, they're kind of all on that same level because they're new. And so that's a great place to start them all and, and really tell them, call it an accountability chat. That mm -hmm. way they're feeling accountable. These are their new accountability partners. They feel like, you know, they're, they, they've got someone to relate to because, because you may be intimidating to them sometimes because you know so much, but they can really ask each other questions. So that's a good platform to go on to. Yeah. Uh, and I would keep it, keep the verbiage really, uh, layman's terms. Don't use, uh, you know, some of the verbiage that we use that are common to us as distributors. So keep it really light, really simple and uh, make it like this is normal. This is what we do. People don't, you know, they've never, um, the vast majority of the people in our organizations have never networked before. So they, they don't know what to do. They don't know uh, the, those initial steps. So don't assume anything and take control of it right away. And then you won't feel overwhelmed. You'll feel like we want you to feel inspired and capable and confident that you can go do this again and again and again. And All so right, okay. Yeah. So the next question, well, there's one more, but I want to skip to the next one real quick. Okay. It's the same thing. I have realized in the, that in the past, I had a hard time helping my new business partners get started. I use the newbie training checklist. Awesome. But as far as having them start right away, what do you suggest as far as posting, asking and doing? So I want to share with you guys 
this is what's been working for me to launch my new people. So since we've been doing host to post, I had this like ping pong idea of like, well, duh, we have been doing host to post and it's been working. What have we been doing? We've been doing cleanse, hair, skin, and nails. We've been doing uh, keto coffee, of course, the skinny coffee. And then of course, also host a post for the business opportunity. And so I t I've taken like the script that we use when we do a host a post and I've just turned it into like their post. So I have them do the same thing. I go, what do you think your audience is gonna wanna, hear, wanna, wanna participate in first? Keto coffee, uh, cleanse, a two day gentle detox, or uh, mermaid challenge, hair challenge, or the business opportunity. And they're like, oh, I think my audience would, would jump on the hair, skin, and nails. I go, perfect. This is the script you're gonna use and post this on your timeline. And I give them two times a day. Like the best time today on Instagram is gonna be like maybe the lunch time frame or around the dinner, late dinner, early evening like this. And so I have them post in, in accordance with that. And you guys, it is working like fire. They're going, I got one, I got one, I got one. Someone wants, someone's interested. And so instead of taking the host to post and them just asking their friends to host for them, I'm giving them the same script for them to post on their own timeline because they're brand new. And they're getting the product model, the people are pump, commenting like crazy. And so then they're starting their follow up. And so then they can go in and ask those people, well, if you want to, you know, you could host for me and put one on your page and it's getting them working in the same way that we're teaching them anyway. And so all of this verbiage is going to make sense to them that we talk about on our team pages. And so I'm keeping it really, really streamlined. I'm not doing anything different for one than I'm doing for another. And it's like, like we're saying, I had to just get organized. And once I got it, it was like I could train my newbie or I could train someone to host a post for me. And it was the same cycle just going over and over again. So that's been working for me as well. And I love that, Kay, because they don't feel like they're selling. Exactly. Yeah. They're just sharing a post and they're, they're the people that are watching them, their friends and family don't feel, feel like they're being sold to. Well, and I already have all the images, y'all, just like yeah. you do. I already have the album saved on my phone. I have my host to post for keto coffee, my host to post for cleanse, and my host to post for hair, skin, and nails. So I don't have to guess. I'm mm -hmm. sending images there. I'm going to save this album to your phone. All these pictures need to go in this album. I can train them just the way that I have it done. And they're going, wow, this is so simple. I didn't realize how, how simple this would be. I thought it was going to be complicated. So it's great. Really Okay. So, right. um, what are your top three self-development books? Wow. Wow. Okay. So I always refer to this one first. I love the magic of thinking big. I really, really like that. And I, you know, one of the newest ones is, uh, I think she's done an excellent job on this is the five second rule by Mel Robbins. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I know a lot of us have used this. We were, I was introduced to her last year. She was an MC at one of the direct selling um, news events where we get recognized for our number in the industry. Uh, she's very talented. It gets you uh, to stop procrastinating. I just did a call on that, uh, a live on that last week. So the magic of thinking big, awesome, awesome book. Uh, you know, Kay and I were talking about this too, because we all kind of have, we're at different stages in our life. I've been doing self-development now for over 20 years. So some of the books that uh, I've, uh, that I'm reading currently uh, were because of other books that I read in the beginning that just one book led to another, which led, leads to another and anything at all by Jim Rohn, R-O-H-N. And you can listen to Jim all day long on YouTube for free. And I love that. He was a, a big part of uh, Herbalife for uh, decades. He was their master trainer. So his information is very conducive to network marketing. Uh, and I love the way that he shares it. His voice is uh, just, he's funny and he gets it. And you, you will just feel like you're starting to truly understand the industry and how to talk to people and how to lead them. He's a master trainer. So uh, anything Jim Rohn, absolutely be perfect. Love him too. He's really helped Scott. Yeah. That's just love. Like he is learning so much and he's listening and listening and listening and listening. 
the great mm-hmm. thing just to have on in the background, you know, while you're getting ready, yeah. you know, I love listening. You've always taught me just put something on and you, you don't, you know, 30 minutes go by and you've done it's your going in listen. and then you hear something. Yeah. It's going, in, it's going in. So good. Okay. Um, any tips on being a le- better leader for my team? Sometimes I feel like I don't take much time for myself because I try to be perfect for my team. And would love any advice on how to balance leadership versus building my own business. I've been killing it this month and I'm leading from the front with enrollments, but I feel like I go full force enrolling. I feel like when I go full force, full full force enrolling, I slack on actually grabbing their hands to lead because I'm focused on enrolling new people. Okay, so I love this question. This this is your business, each and every one of you. And what I did early on in mine, I had a great mentor that really helped me um, value my time, uh, my time in building my own personal team, which is also leading your team, your current team, and then adding. You always want to be adding new people, always. This is the biggest thing that I see leadership start to fall and start to fail uh, is when we get into that more of that management mode and we stop bringing in new people, which I don't know how your team suddenly sees this or senses this, then they all stop too. And you could be stuck somewhere for about two years, just a handful of people coming in and enough come going out to kind of stay the same and nothing's really growing. So we always want, to spend the majority of our time in our own personal recruiting. We really do. We, we want to set up our day the way we want our day to be so that we're not feeling overwhelmed, so that we are feeling like a confident leader. And so we get to set the stage for this. And this is what I, I loved that I did. I structured my day so that I had so many, so much time to spend recruiting. And then I had a window of of time that I, uh, my team knew that they could get in touch with me. Now this is really, I mean, we're talking about 20 years ago, we didn't have all the, the social aspects that you all have today with cell phones, text messaging. And uh, so this uh, has evolved for me over time. Now that we've got more capability at our fingertips, we can structure this pretty easily. I would let your team know when you are available to them and the amount of time. Because if you do this, one of the things, and you've probably all have heard this since you were leaders, people will say things like, I don't want to work as hard as you do. Have you ever heard that, Kay? I don't want to work as much as you do. Or, um, I'm intimidated by it or they don't understand it. Or do you yeah. really, I hear, um, actually hear, um, because I'm full time, I actually hear from prospects. I'll hear, um, do you think I can really do this part time? Because yeah. I see the part time that was there to begin with. I'm like, wait, right. let's back this up. It didn't start out like this, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Yes. Uh, you know, I was just talking to uh, Mira Denning. Uh, Mira was on my call this past week and she's a triple, just made triple diamond is working full time and still working full time and just promoted to triple. And so what we do and, and what I did it worked extremely well for me is I just, if, if you've got two hours to work your business, each day you want to devote a full hour to recruiting and then a full hour to probably uh, not probably your leadership, which is your team building. Uh, I wouldn't give precedence over that at all. I wouldn't say, all right, I need an hour and 45 minutes for my team and 15 minutes for recruiting because then you're, you're going to, your business is going to start going in the direction you don't want it to go into. You get into management mode, which can be very taxing on you mentally. And, and then a group, group zoom, everybody, you know, just, I I mean, it does. I, I, I know that you're like me. We get a lot of questions and typically people expect an immediate response, but what you're going to find, if that's not your time that you have allotted 
that particular hour that you've allotted for those questions, don't get back to them immediately. Stick with that allotted time. And then what, what you want to do, what you'll train them to do is they'll go look for the, the answer on their own because we're, we're impatient. We don't want to wait. And that's what we really want them to do is go find that in the E-suite. And that might be the only answer you ever give is, oh, you can find that in the E-suite and let them go find it. And this, this is the best form of leadership possible. It's no different than uh, I see Kay raising Kennedy. She's not doing everything for Kennedy. Ken, she's coaching and teaching Kennedy how to do on his own so that he can be a proud child, a child that feels accomplished, and a child that feels confident. And that's how we want our distributors to feel. If we're, you know, a lot of you will tell me, uh, well, I'm just doing everything for them. Nobody's really working. Well, you, you've set that up. I mean, that's, you know, we're training our, our dog right now. And I'm learning a lot about from reading this doggy book on, uh, hey, if you don't want him to jump up on you, you, you have to tell him to sit and then you'll pick him up. And so what, if we don't want our distributors calling us all the time, driving us crazy, uh, texting us all the time, we have to tell them when they can. Oh, I'm available between two and three. So send messages then and I can get back with you. And, and set it up. You, you, you want to create a beautiful day in a, in a gorgeous business. And so value your time, value your knowledge. And just don't give it away all the time. Let them be very self-sufficient. Uh, and again, that answer may not be the answer that they think they're going to get. It may be, here's where you go find that. Yeah. And you're creating a very self-sufficient team and a self-efficient team, which is really what we want. No different than we want with our children. So um, we should not feel overwhelmed with this that's the last thing we want to create for our distributors is a feeling of overwhelmment or a feeling of lack like I'm just not that great of a leader leadership is learned along the way and we want to give ourselves a big pat on the back if we've got a team of two or more and we're leading them we I don't think that we honor ourselves enough if if you feel like you're lacking a little in leadership, then start listening to Jim Rohn on leadership. Yeah. And, you know, 30 minutes a day, it will rock your world and change you. And your team is looking up to you. Don't be short with them. Uh, that's another thing. They respect you. And if you want that respect back, then we need to honor each other, but we also don't want to allow them to run all over us either. Well, and I think, you know, one of the biggest messages that you're exuding here to all of us is your leaders or your team, our team, everybody needs to see us working mm -hmm. because the last thing you want or we want, I try to really, as I'm trying to really hard, I'm trying to make sure you guys, I say, we, do you hear me? Because when you're talking to your team, when we're talking to our team, we need to use we. We're all in this together. We, yes. We learn from each other. We learn. I learn from all of you. It's a, everything that's happen, it happens is a reflection of what I need to go through, what I need to learn, how I can you know, better lead. I'm a fully aware of that. I soak it in. I absorb it. I work through it. So we need to continuously do that with our organization because it's all a reflection. And when they see us working, they know that no matter what rank they're at, no matter where they go, they get to keep doing what they love the most. And they don't have to come in, right, and micromanage and micromanage and micromanage because there's a lot of fear in that too. When they're having fun, making their fast starts and coming in quick and coming in hot and making all this quick bonus money, and then, they, and then they see us stop and start to micromanage, 
what's going to happen? They're going to start to do the same thing. And then it's going to become, it's not going to become fun anymore. It's going to become work and everything that they left to come here to join because this was fun. So we need to be mindful of that too and continuously do what we came here for. And that's what we get paid for. And that's enrolling customers in enrolling distributors. I had a, uh, Okay, I had an executive tell me she was exhausted from her team. Yep. An executive. And I'm like, so how many people do you have on your team? And she said three. And I said, well, there, there should not be any exhaustion there. And so I coached her just with this, like, but you need to be putting more people in. You want to go diamond mm -hmm. and above. So just guide them, guide them, guide them. But another, I think part of it is our ego. We want to be all that and more for our team. Well, the way that you do leadership the best and the, what I've learned the best. And a, a lot of times people, I mean, people come to me for this all the time and you want true beach money. Yeah. That's what we want. We want, residual income and lots of it, lots of it. And to continue to grow every single month. So how do we create that? We create that through our leadership mm -hmm. and uh, guiding them along the way, but also acknowledging that they're smart. You know, they don't, and, and that we don't have to be on them all the time. We don't want that kind of leadership. Mm -hmm. So I would just guide people all along the way to find the answers to those questions. I will get them up front as fast as possible. You've got some people on your team that are executives and rubies that are very, very sharp and they're doing some things that are different and we want to acknowledge them and, and put them on a zoom, let their voice be heard, start in the very beginning with them, letting them be responsible and, and uh, sharing their wisdom with us. If they've just gotten a new customer, let them share that. Mm -hmm. And so I was always really good about putting new people up front in the meetings, in the rooms and moving myself back. And that's what you want. You want tens of thousands of people in your organization and they're all knowing exactly what to do. And here you are reaping the benefits of that because you put in effective leadership, leadership that isn't uh, are required of 99% of your time. That's not what you want. I, I want people that are very effective, that know how to lead, because I've taught them where to go find the information on their own, how to go find their own customers, how to recruit their own distributors and not build it for them, but build it with them. It may seem like it takes longer, but my gosh, it doesn't. It's like when Kay first started to learn how to wash her own clothes, it was very tiring to stand up there with her to help her sort through her clothes I could have done it in nanoseconds, but I stood there with her for weeks until she got it. And I've never done her clothes since. And she was 10, 10 years old when she started. So um, have more confidence in the people that you're bringing in. They're smart. They can get this. They can do this. So that you, uh, that leadership that you have within your organization is one of, of strength and no anxiety, one of structure, and uh, that and the hours that you want to input into it. Now, Kay's more full time. She's going to spend. She's got a bigger team than a lot of you. She's going to spend a little bit more time in leadership, but she's going to still spend the vast majority of her time bringing in new people. And that's what I want for her. I want her to bring in new people, and all of our leadership to be constantly bringing in new people or, or it works, but would not grow. And that's what we're here for. We're here for growth. Well, you've got a lot of big promotions that are happening this year. That's mm -hmm. true. You know, uh, mom, before we move forward, can you, can you break down and explain what beach money 
really means because I feel like this is a really good platform to have that conversation. Yeah. Beach money is real, true residual. It's, uh, it's like when that check gets to be extremely exciting. Now for some people, beach money is $5,000 a month. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's more than they've ever made and it's coming in consistently every single month. It might go 51, it might go 4,800, but it's hovering right around in there in that $5,000 range. Now for others, it, it's, it's a hundred thousand dollars a month. You know, that's, that's their beach money. That's their, what, what they want consistently coming in every single month. And in order to create that, then you've really got to put it out there that I'm confident that I can build this. I'm confident that uh, this type of money is not scary to me. This type of money is exactly what I want. And I am willing to put in the time, the energy, and the effort to create that and, and honor that in someone, you know, but if people sometimes are real flip with me and they go, Oh, I want to make $10,000 a month. I can tell by the way they say it, they're not willing to do really willing to do the work behind it to make that possible. So beach money for me and big daddy is a lot different than it was in the beginning. In the beginning for me, uh, to make a $5,000 a month check was tremendous. Uh, to, and then to double that to 10 was like ridiculous. And, uh, but then once I got there, I could see myself even go further. And so that is true residual income. That means that money is coming in if you needed to exit out for 30, 60, 90 days, because life happened or you decided to go to Tahiti on the beach for 30 days, that check would be there when you got back. So that's true beach money. Fantastic. Thank you. Yep. Okay. So we, we already answered the next question. Uh, what are the best ways to launch strategies to launch? A yep. um, well, we could kind of go into that a little bit more quickly as far as launching a new distributor. I think we talked about the, the really how to get them kick started. And I, and I want to say that mom you and I had this fantastic conversation the other day, you know, um, really good at, we're really good at separating the, the mom life with mm -hmm. the daughter life and the business and all that. And I just said, you know, I really want to have a good business to business conversation. And we were talking about this and we were saying, you know, we don't ever want to confuse the field and to confuse you all into the, into our organizations and to think that you have to be one thing over the other or one over the other social media over field field over social media. We want you and our, all of our teams to feel so confident that you can build the way that you want to build. Because I was even telling mom, you know, vulnerable moment. I came into this business in the field. I mean, we didn't even social media. If you go watch the social network, that's like right when I was in college, that whole movie, we actually watched that last night. I watched it with my girlfriend. We came in, I came into it works when Facebook was just getting started. We didn't even have Instagram yet, you guys. Mm -hmm. So I may be only 30 years old, but I feel so old school sometimes because I came in and did parties, parties, parties. I was doing events, expos, this and that, but I was 21 years old. I had no kids. I was living the dream. I was doing, I could try, I could get in the car and drive to Ohio if I want, wanted to, whatever. I have two boys. I have a husband. I live in Florida. Life is, looks a lot different today, but I also have a different desire. I want to be home more. I wanted to build my business on social media. It didn't mean that I came in as a rock star really knowing and, 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 and knowing what that meant. I had to learn those skills. Some of you can come in, you're already tapped in and wired. You know what Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, you know, how, you're like rocking it. I had to learn all these things. So my point in saying all that is I was kind of expressing to her some of my insecurities and where I was feeling like maybe I was lacking or growing or evolving or whatnot. And had to realize that though I may be developing a skills and really growing and prospering on social media and have been doing that over a couple of years, some of you want to be in the field. 
And that's where you thrive. So be in the field, be out blitzing, be doing parties. So we want to bring this opportunity to everybody and our new distributor. Maybe it's not social media they want. Maybe it is in the field and we want to honor that. And so mom, I feel like that's a good conversation. If you're launching a brand new DT, find out how they want to build this business. Yeah. And you know, they, um, again, it's like, you want to find out who they are and what makes them tick because if they're going to try to be you and they think that's the only way and, and they're not social media, like if you, if let's, let's talk about the, my generation, (laughs) they're only on, most of them are only on Facebook to watch their kids and their grandchildren. So if you tell someone like that, well, you've got to build on social media, they're, they're probably going to quit right away. And I think this is why some of our distributors do leave so quickly is because they think, oh, I've got to be this, but that's not really who I am, Mm -hmm. where they could have had success had you had a little uh, Q&A time with them. Like, how do you see yourself building each and every day? What what's uh, the platform that you want to use because of the nature of it works and the products we can, we're so fortunate with this company. We're one of the only ones that I know of that really truly can get out and demonstrate products and demonstrate them effectively in a uh, less than an hour time. If we want to wrap somebody or just let them sip and sample all of our keto products, um, it's just a beautiful system. So if somebody wants to work in the field, which is wrap parties, uh, visit spas, salons, gyms, whatever they want to do, have at it. And so what you want as a leader is to be able to offer those platforms for them. So there needs to be confidence in you that you can guide somebody that in that way. If you've not done a wrap party, maybe the thing to do is go out and do one. Yeah. So that you can get a feel for it. Because here's a, if you're wondering something too, if you're looking down through your organization, there's a lot of dormant people there. It It's more than likely that they just didn't feel like they had the right vehicle uh, or the right way to move this vehicle. And uh, maybe they were trying to be such and such on social media. We get so much of that. Well, I just want to be so and so. Well, that's really not who you are. Exactly. And if you're trying to be them, people can feel it. Suddenly you become this fake friend that is trying something so different that people aren't accustomed to. And that's why they're not responding. Mm-hmm. So you can probably look at their social feed and to kind of tell who they are. But uh, uh, again, don't assume. So ask them some really pointed questions. And you might want to put it out there for your current team right now. So if you've got some people that really haven't started and and gone in the direction that you knew that they could, why don't you reach out to them and say, Hey, I just want to apologize. I feel like maybe we didn't get started right. Uh, I just feel that there's so much potential in you. And, and so I'd like for us to have a, a, a conversation on this. And I, I would be doing that all day long with people that you really felt, wow, they could have done this. They had it in them. They had, uh, perhaps you saw that they had a lot of friends on Facebook and, and here's a, here's something that I'm working with this, a social, uh, guru right now. And he was saying that right now, what these companies are looking for are what are called macro. They are macro contributors. And this is the, the thousand and under followers the people that have a thousand and under people following them because they have such a strong influence with those. Instead of you've got a hundred thousand followers, you don't really aren't connected with them. Like perhaps if you had a thousand or less, because I know I've got over a hundred thousand Facebook followers. I don't know who they all are. Absolutely do not know who they all are. And I still keep seeing the same ones over and over again. So, um, let, let's go out and maybe do some things that are a little bit different in our organization and let people see us doing those because you might turn somebody on that absolutely could get out there and do some rap parties because they saw you doing one. Love that. I just got a great idea. And blitzing. Get out and blitz. Show your team you're not afraid of that. Yeah. You know, take pictures of that. 
be be that in if you want to be an inspired leader go be inspiring go out and actually do some work out there and let them see you doing it and uh, if you've got something that's working for you don't hoard it you know i used to work with a guy oh my god he was so awful at hoarding information he and he never became successful because of that he was always hiding things. If you would come by, he would take his papers and almost shove them down his shirt so you couldn't see what he was working on. And it, it, it's just the craziest thing. I think about him all the time, and he's still not successful because he doesn't share information. I love that Kay is sharing all this information with all of you, and I'm hoping that um, you are sharing this as well with your team. I am. Um... I was going to say something. Shoot. All right. We got about five minutes. Kay, and I've got to get, I got it. Okay. We're going to go to the next question. Okay. okay. Um, actually we're kind of done. We have one more. All right. Good. Um, well, what, what do I focus on primarily when my team, I feel like I need to read all these questions. There's two more. What do I, okay. what, what do I focus on primarily when my team is falling apart faster than I can build it? Building or self-development, question mark. Leadership skills, question mark. I sometimes wonder if I'm not doing the right things as a leader, question mark. Que uh, suggestions for things I should be doing as a leader, question mark. All right, so what was that first part, Kay? So the first part was, what do I focus on? This is a question. What do I focus on primarily when my team is falling apart faster than I can build it? building or self-development which one all right so this is a self-development question mm -hmm. um first of all we got to change up that language you know those thoughts wrapped around um my uh, you know this is uh this is some work here this is some good leadership work and one of the first things that i do when let's say one of our ambassador diamonds reaches out to me. I let them rant for about a minute and I'm writing down everything they're telling me because typically within that minute to two minutes, I can pretty much tell what's going on with their organization. So what we want to do and how, how in the heck Pam can I just, well, this is what's going on is I feel like I've got just as enough, enough coming in and going out at the same time that everything's just spinning in a circle well, you know what? That may be true, but that doesn't mean that that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the way you want your team to be. And we're going to create that, those type of vibes and that type of leadership right now. We're going to say my team is absolutely the fastest growing team and it works. I have so many strong leaders coming up through the ranks, starting to join my team and it's starting to take my business to the next level. This team is the dream team. These are the type of people that I'm working with. They're inspired, dedicated, loyal, uh, uh, work hard workers they they love what they do they're so much fun and you're you're going to write down all the attributes of the type of business that you want and the type of people that you want in your business and you're going to change this attitude is everything and it's contagious and if you're feeling this about your team it's it's as though that's what you're praying over them those words are what they can sense and feel from you. And so they're, they're just, they're cooperating with you. They're doing exactly what you're saying. And so what, what do I do every morning? I'm like, my, this, it works team rocks. And you know, when things start to look like they're unraveling, I have to go right back to that. I have to go right back to that. How would you like Mark or I saying that? about our team, calling that out. And so when we're doing, uh, making statements like this, this is really what we're praying over our team. And they can feel it. So let's change it up and that'll change your attitude, which will get, lift you up higher and you're gonna start seeing a difference almost immediately in your team. The dead ones will start texting you. The, some that left will start to come back. I'm telling you, this is happening right now. 
as we speak because you're going to be this is your homework when we get off the zoom tonight this is your homework Pray, what kind of prayer do you want to say over your team what kind of acknowledgement do you want over your team what type of team do you truly want i mean i've got chill bumps just talking about this this is how we are going to change every you're a massive enroller an incredible leader you've got a team that absolutely rocks they're they're taking their businesses to a whole nother level you're going right there with them and this is is what that every team and it works is going to be looking at and saying well what happened to her and her team they are rocking it they are they're badass team and that's what you want and so every day you're going to get up and read that you're going to pour that and when when those thoughts start to come by you're you're not going to fight them but you're going to read that you're going to read that prayer again you're going to talk about it and at first it again at first you may like struggle with that a little bit because you're like this isn't really what's happening but this is what's going to happen and it's almost immediate almost immediate when, when that turns around you're going to have a rocking team and i love this question because we're all fighting and battling this every single one of us every single day we want to look at what is call it out more and more keeps happening when really what we want to do is imagine this impressive team imagine our life and what we want our life to be like imagine the type of friendships you want to make imagine the type of leaderships that you want to have imagine that check what is that check going to be for you? Imagine what that would feel like. Imagine sitting on the white couch. Imagine sharing how because of this Zoom, you started writing out the prayer that you wanted over your team and you put that prayer in action by your words. And that's how you do it. Turn it around right now. You've got an awesome team. Awesome team. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go get on with my team. I'm going to read. Love you guys. Yes, I want to read. Bye, it. everyone. Mom. Hey, listen in for the announcement. You're going to love it. We are. And I want All right. Bye. Bye, Mom. I'm going to read you guys something before we yeah, go. Yeah, read them that. Love you. Okay, love you. Bye. So the next question was literally like the same thing. After the honeymoon period, my new distributors get discouraged and quit. What are the tips to keep them motivated? So I'm reading this amazing book. This is called Wealth and Success. It's what, uh, Maximize Your Potential Through the Power of Your Subconscious Mind to Create Wealth and Success. It's by Dr. Joseph Murphy. I love it. And I was reading, I'll share that with you later. I know that's a mouthful. But here was a woman who believed, who heard this affirmation. So we've all heard affirmations, right? And we, we take these in and sometimes we hear an affirmation to to help us take our life to the next level. And this woman didn't believe the affirmation. So I'm going to go through this with you. A woman came to my office. Um, a woman who came to my office misunderstood the application of the law of attraction. She told me, Oh, I got an affirmation from someone saying I am rich and prosperous. Now I am successful and very wealthy. That was the affirmation. So the affirmation she was supposed to say to herself was, Oh, um, I am rich and prosperous. Now I am successful and very wealthy. However, she didn't believe the affirmation in her heart. She didn't believe it. So the affirmation just made me much more aware of my need. Unfortunately, she believed more in poverty and lack than she had in the riches all around her. So here's the cool thing. This is how we he helped her. So Dr. Joseph Murphy explained, you must turn away from the pattern, change your belief. Your subconscious accepts what you believe. Look around you, realize that God created you and the whole world. So he's getting her to try to look around instead of continuously believing those thoughts in her head over and over and over again. He wants her just to look around at all the riches and beautiful things that are around her for her to be grateful for. Okay. And he said, realize that God created you and the world around you. It's an invisible spirit within you. It created your heartbeat, the air you breathe, the water you drink and the food you eat. Therefore, turn away from the thoughts of limitation and turn within and say, 
I recognize the eternal source of my supply. God is the source of my supply. All my needs, spiritual, mental, material are met every moment of time and point uh, are met at every moment of time and point in space. God's wealth is circulating in my life and there is always a surplus. By day and by night, I'm advancing and growing spiritually in every single way. So she began to realize the source of the infinite ocean of supply that was there for her, um, of every hair on her head, every uh, the grass, the hay in the field, the cattle, and all the thousand hills, it says. She aligned herself with this source and realized that she was writing in her subconscious mind the idea of wealth, growth, and prosperity. She changed her belief in poverty, which was a false belief that doesn't even exist, right? It's a false belief to a belief in the endless riches all around her. And so we have to pay attention to what we're saying to ourselves. And what mom is saying is, even if, you know, maybe if it's not that, that you fully believe yet that your team is of abundance, that everyone's enrolling, that people are excited, whatever it is, you have to start with something you do believe and shift your focus. And then your focus will come to all the abundance that is around you. Your team will start to grow. And it's just, you guys, I'm telling you, when I'm reading these questions, I'm realizing that a lot of it is just this, these thoughts. And I can share this with you. I'll take a picture of it. It was like beautiful to me. So I was so excited to read that. There's some really great, um, there's a really great um, affirmation in here for um, achieving financial wealth. So I'll share that with you as well. So you guys, it's 10 o'clock. It's time for our, our Zoom with Pam and Mark on, um, on mom's page. Just go there and it'll be live or go to Mark's page. It'll be live there. Thank you guys for joining us tonight. This was awesome. I appreciate you so much. Thank you. This was great. Thank you. Bye you guys. Bye.